briefing right now. Let's listen in. Are injured to the families of those who were lost. We are deeply saddened. The toll right now stands at, at least 30 dead in Belgium and at least 170 injured, and sadly, we expect that toll to increase. We stand in solidarity with the people of Belgium, with Prime Minister Charles Michel and Mayor Yvonne Mayer of Brussels and all of the people of that nation that has been at the front line of the fight against terror. And they are not alone. We stand in solidarity with the people of Turkey and who have been victims in recent days of car bombings and other attacks that have taken many lives. The community of nations has to stand together at moments like this and reject the forces of terror and the appalling violence that they wreak upon innocent people. And we in New York City stand ready to fight against terror in every way. Let me say at the outset, there is no specific and credible threat against New York City at this time, but we are in a high state of vigilance and readiness because of the investments we have made in building a strong anti-terror capacity in this city, our critical response command, 500 plus officers at the ready, highly trained, well armed, plus our strategic response group, our emergency services unit. All these units were available this morning. Commissioner Bratton and his team will speak in a moment about the way they were deployed, but I want to commend the NYPD for immediately responding to the incidents in Belgium and putting additional capacity out at key sites around the city and particularly in our subway system to show people that they were safe and to make sure that we were ready to respond uh, in all instances. So there was a tremendous amount of NYPD presence uh, around our subway system, in particular literally just hours after the attack showing the uh, speed and the agility with which the NYPD can move. We are working very closely with all our partners. You'll hear from a moment. Uh, from the FBI leaders in this area. And we thank them, as always, for their extraordinary partnership. Uh, we've been working closely with the state and the Port Authority, uh, given that these issues obviously affected the airport in Belgium. Uh, but all those preparations, all the effort that's being put into the day to make sure people are safe, all the personnel that have been deployed should be a, another reminder to all New Yorkers that the NYPD and all our partners are keeping the people of this city safe and therefore is a moment to remember that what the terrorists want is for us to change our ways. The terrorists want to undermine our democracy, they want to undermine our values, they want to see us in panic and we refuse to be afraid, we refuse to change who we are. We are going to respond to their efforts to create chaos by showing them order, by showing our society functioning, our city functioning. And the NYPD is ensuring that everyone can go about their business safely. 35,000 members of the NYPD today all acting as one uh, to protect the people of this city. The terrorists, by definition, try to use death as their tool, their aim is to spread death. We answer them with life. We answer them with a strong and vibrant society. I ask the people of New York City to offer your prayers to the victims of these attacks and their families and to stand in solidarity with them. And over the next hours and days, we will keep the people updated as new adult developments occur, but expect to see uh, extraordinary NYPD presence out over the coming days as a sign of our readiness to protect people at all times. Quickly in Spanish, desde Nueva York enviamos nuestro más sentido pésame a las familias de todas las víctimas de los ataques terroristas en Bélgica, los ataques recientes en Turquía y todos los demás afectados por el terrorismo. En este momento, momento no hay amenaza específica contra Nueva York, pero la policía ha reforzado la seguridad en toda la ciudad como medida de precaución. 
With that, I'd like to turn to Commissioner Bratt, and he in turn will turn to the FBI leadership. I want to thank the Commissioner's team for very effectively and speedily responding to the events of this morning. Commissioner Bratt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're joined this morning, uh, group at the front here, and he will speak shortly, Carlos Rodriguez, who is the FBI Assistant Director in charge here of the New York office. Also, Carlos Fernandez, uh, the FBI Special Agent in charge of our Joint Terrorism Task Force. So Carlos will come up and speak to some of the activities that uh, the seamless uh, uh, operation we have between the federal agencies and the NYPD about what's happening there relative to any potential threat to New York, as well as what we're learning from the events in Belgium. Uh, they'll be followed by uh, John Miller, uh, Deputy Commissioner for Intelligence Counterterrorism, who will give you a synopsis of uh, what we know and what we're responding to, what we began to respond to very early this morning. The mayor made reference to the entities that uh, he has helped to create with the authorization of now almost 1,300 additional offices this year. The CRC unit, the SIG unit that a few months ago did not even exist, were fully employed this morning, deployed with our VSU capacity as well as our transit offices, so that we were able to, the timing of this event allowed us to hold over the morning tours of duty on all of those units, so we were able to literally double the amount of offices available to us this morning during the, the morning rush hour in our transit system. By coincidence, I had a uh, breakfast meeting up on the Grand Central area this morning, took the train down, going through Grand Central Terminal, which is under the control of the state MTA, significant numbers of National Guard and MTA offices in that environment. And at the subway entrance, the main subway entrance, there were two of John Miller's counterterrorism CRC officers standing at that escalator. At the bottom of the escalator, there was a squad of transit officers doing bag inspections. Beyond the turnstile, a, uh, a transit uh, uh, dog uh, on patrol in that mezzanine. And then taking the express train down from Grand Central at uh, Union Square Station uh, for SIG officers got onto the train, two in my car and two in the Jason car. These are the officers equipped with the long guns, the helmets, etc. So I felt very secure from the movement from 14th Street down to the Brooklyn Bridge. At the Brooklyn Bridge uh, station, getting off there at City Hall to come up to my office, looking across the platform for the uptown train, there were additional SIG officers already getting ready to board the uptown train. That degree of coverage will continue for the foreseeable future so we get a better idea of what transpired over there. That uh, in terms of uh, uh, um, Diego Rodriguez is going to speak to issues of the coordination between our respective uh, entities as I referenced and then we'll have uh, John Miller come up and update you on what we've been doing specifically this morning and going forward into the next several days. So with that uh, 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 very close partner, uh, Diego, if I could, uh, please. Thanks, Commissioner. In light of the uh, recent events overseas, the FBI here in New York continues to monitor intelligence and investigate threats as they come in. As always, we'll be ready to assist uh, our local and our foreign law enforcement uh, colleagues. The FBI New York field office is unaware of any specific credible threat to our area at this time. We remind the public not to let fear become uh, disabling. Turn it into healthy awareness, folks. Counterterrorism is what you pay us to do. Uh, if you see something, please let us know so we can investigate it. We have uh, dedicated operational squads to monitor any incoming threat uh, reporting that uh, affects the New York area, and we will continue to work with our law enforcement agencies, uh, intelligence, and federal partners through our Joint Terrorism Task Force, the largest J JTTF in the country here in New York, uh, to protect this great city of ours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you reminded me on that subway ride down this morning, that short subway ride, I want to thank our, our colleagues at the MTA for their public safety announcements. There were, coincidentally, there was a public safety announcement on the See Something, Say Something, which was very appropriate in light of this morning's uh, uh, issues in Belgium. Then there was a second uh, public safety announcement about watching for your valuables, the concern we always have on the subway uh, system relative to pickpocket activity. So just another example of the collaboration between all the respective entities, focused on public safety.
I'd like to uh, bring up uh, uh, John Miller, who will update you on what transpired this morning in our response to uh, uh, what occurred to the events uh, of this morning. John. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, at 3.31 a.m. this morning, uh, notifications came from the Counterterrorism Bureau's uh, overnight watch desk that there had been attacks overseas uh, that were in progress. Between 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock in the morning, um, phone calls uh, between myself, uh, Chief of Department Jim O'Neill, Chief of Citywide Operations Tom Pertel, Chief Waters from the Counterterrorism Bureau, Chief Galati from the Intelligence Bureau, started a number of wheels turning uh, that would change the shape and picture we saw this morning. Immediate decisions were made, um, even while information about the attacks in Belgium was still preliminary to hold over the midnight to eight shift of the uh, Strategic Response Group, the SRG, as well as the Counterterrorism Bureau, CRC, or the Critical Response uh, Group, and um, to redeploy them to posts that reflected uh, increasing security in transit locations, transit hubs, and other high-profile locations for the rush hour. This included uh, heavy weapons teams, uh, special weapons teams, uh, transit uh, K-9 Special Operations Division Explosive Detection K-9 um, are vapor wake dogs that can move through crowds and detect suicide bombers on the move, uh, as well as numerous bag check um, at, uh, at subway entrances posts, um, as well as explosive residue detection uh, machinery that was deployed at uh, other bag check locations. So what you saw was uh, the sum total of uh, a couple of hours work that uh, brought hundreds of people, lots of equipment and special talents to uh, this this morning. This isn't something that we started thinking about between 3 and 4 a.m. This is something we think about every minute of every day. We looked at the Charlie Hebdo attacks, uh, we met with the police commissioner and the mayor, and we reshaped the counterterrorism response piece um, by uh, developing the SRG and the CRC to complement the emergency service unit, um, to have uh, citywide flying squads that with the, the ability to mobilize large numbers and deploy as we did this morning, working in concert with our transit bureau and all of this um, special equipment. We were also in touch with uh, Diego Rodriguez and Carlos Fernandez from the JTTF, uh, getting a feed of what information they were getting from Belgium so we could understand what were the uh, training tactics and procedures that were used um, by the attackers at the scene, what we could learn from those in terms of how to enhance our deployment, uh, as well as our foreign posts in London, um, in Interpol, in Paris, to see what they were gleaning from their sources. So this was um, an all-out effort that is part of the normal drumbeat of trying to manage the threat stream in New York City. I would point out a, a couple of other things, which is, as part of this, uh, the Commissioner and I are going to be in Washington uh, the day after tomorrow, uh, meeting with the National Counterterrorism Center and talking to them about uh, the latest intelligence and, um, and cutting-edge thinking in terms of counterterrorism and comparing notes about what New York City is doing uh, with other cities. Um, we're also planning a tabletop exercise uh, within the next few days that is designed around a multiple location, multiple pronged attack scenario to uh, test our incident command system based on what we've seen in Paris, what we saw this morning, um, and what we've seen in other places in the world. And finally, um, I would just like to point out parenthetically that all of this happens at a time when um, we see a budget proposal to cut the urban area security initiative, initiative funds as well as other key counterterrorism funds to New York City by 50 percent, which is something I just thought I would take this uh, opportunity to remind you, as the mayor did before Congress a few days ago, um, seems to make no sense in this environment, especially based on the idea that what we were able to marshal and deploy today outside of the personnel costs um, is largely things and entities and elements that are funded from those dollars. Thank you.
questions on this uh, terror issues right Mr. now? Mayor, yes, yes. So we're going to do. We're going to take questions on this topic, and then uh, after our colleagues from the FBI department, we'll go back to the uh, topics we were planning on talking about originally. Yes. Question for the FBI: Do you know any? You guys can tell of any U.S. victims? Do you know? As you can imagine, it's still preliminary and a lot of chaos still going on. So we're working with uh, our legal attache, who's the representative there, who's working with the host country to identify any U.S. Uh, citizens there. And uh, we have not heard any yet. It's uh, very preliminary right now. We know there was two, uh, possibly three. But uh, again, it's too early to, to, to say we're waiting for some more intelligence. So in these types of situations, uh, we'll, we'll get ready to deploy a, a team of folks, depending on the requirements necessary uh, for this type of uh, crisis. Sometimes we'll send uh, some special agent bomb techs to assist. We'll certainly uh, send the personnel, both part of the JTTF, so task force officers uh, will go as well, depending on the investigative needs, uh, again, depending on if we have any U.S. citizens or at the request of the host country. At this time, it's too too early to tell exactly how it was carried out and uh, compare it to anything. You have a, hold on, you have a, Yeah. I don't know if you happen to be bilingual. Yes. Okay. Sí, señora. Eh, o, o sea, lo que estamos haciendo ahorita en la FBI es eh, eh, Viendo la inteligencia que está llegando aquí a los Estados Unidos, estamos eh, mirando si hay víctimas eh, ciudadanas eh, americanos de aquí y si hay nosotros, eso es parte de la responsabilidad de la FBI y investigar eso y mandar un grupo de o un equipo de agentes allá para ayudarle a, a, a los de Bélgica a investigar este caso. I'll just start and pass to the Commissioner. You know, I've mentioned to some of you that I visited Paris after the first attacks, January of last year, the Charlie Hebdo attack and the attack on the kosher market. And uh, the conversations that we had begun here about strengthening our anti-terror anti capacity really uh, jumped forward after that because it was quite clear, despite uh, very, very substantial efforts, um, that there were vulnerabilities evident in the first Paris attacks that we had to learn from and address. And that's when we came to the conclusion that we needed a much stronger, dedicated anti-terror force, the Critical Response Command, that had to be 500-plus officers, that had to be uh, officers dedicated to anti-terrorism, not borrowed from precincts on a temporary basis, but a dedicated force, well-armed, well-trained, uh, to inhibit acts of terror and to be ready for any eventuality. I want to thank uh, Chair Vanessa Gibson from the Public Safety Committee and the City Council, because the City Council was very uh, supportive in the budget process last June that gave us the resources so we could create that critical response command. So uh, I'm, uh, I have to say it is sobering, having seen the pain that Paris has gone through and now Brussels has gone through. But it is a reminder we do need to learn from each incident, and we quickly made adjustments after that first uh, Paris attack, which have given us the capacity that literally this morning was turned on a dime. Uh, within just an hour or two, that capacity was visibly in evidence in our subways. I may expand on the mayor's comments that uh, this is an issue that, uh, in my case, I probably spent about 40 percent of my time as police commissioner on counterterrorism related issues. A lot of you, that you see at these news conferences, but a lot of behind the scenes briefings, discussions. John Miller mentioned that uh, we'll be down at the NCTC for our presentation and uh, shared discussions uh, on Thursday. Uh, we have an upcoming trip to the Mideast to further our relationships there. John already has a scheduled uh, trip with some of his people over to Paris and Belgium 
as a follow-up to the previous incidents, so the timing of that trip now will be even more beneficial in light of what just happened in Belgium. We are in the process of adding another detective to Europol that, uh, to deal with many of the uh, issues that they are uh, dealing with. So this is something that uh, we are continually modifying and expanding upon, and uh, it is important as we can clearly see because we still remain one of the top terrorist targets in the country. I think I can speak for uh, uh, both uh, federal colleagues and what we're doing. We, at any given time, uh, are very engaged in uh, uh, staying aware of potential threats in terms of individuals, et cetera, in the city. And uh, as we gather more intelligence, we have certainly ramped up that uh, activity as it relates to those that we uh, have concerns with, but uh, the intelligence gathering and sharing, particularly from the Federal Bureau of Investigation, will be beneficial to ensure that uh, there is not a nexus between what happened over there uh, and with the individuals that we might have concern with over here. So that's one of the first things that goes on, and the benefit of the FBI with their international relationships being able to very quickly uh, identify is what we are looking at here is of an access to what occurred over there. I see there's Anne on this side, and then we'll come back over to the other side. Go ahead. Commissioner, you mentioned ramped up security at major transit hubs. Are there any other New York City landmarks where we can expect to see security? And also, you mentioned you're in touch with Port Authority Police. What about the airports, bridges, yeah. tunnels? Airports, bridges, tunnels of all separate entities. As I referenced in my uh, walk through Grand Central Terminal this morning before going down to the station, uh, the uh, state agencies were very present there. The military, uh, large contingent of them, the MTA personnel, and uh, my assumption is that any of the Port Authority airports, et cetera, you're going to see a similar ramped up uh, operation. We uh, really have worked very hard, as you know, over these last several years to have seamless relationships and coordination with them on all of these issues. As it relates to uh, the events in Belgium and our response this morning, in addition to the transit system, that there are certain locations in the city, certainly anything having to do with an affiliation with the Belgium uh, government. We have uh, resources that uh, are both visible as well as um, uh, not as visible at all of those locations throughout the city. And once again, as the mayor pointed out, that we're fortunate that with the CRC, those people are operating 24 hours a day. So this morning, because of the happenstance, this occurred about an hour before our shift change. We were able to hold over the morning group, reinforce them with the day group for both SIG, CRC, ESU. So we will continue that double capacity for the foreseeable future as far as holding over uh, the shifts to these specialized units so we can provide that coverage not only into the transit system, but some of the uh, special sites, uh, particularly at this point in time. Belgium and France. And also major sites. You've been listening to Mayor de Blasio and the NYPD briefing us on the stepped up security in New York City in the wake of the terror attacks in Brussels. Much more coming up today on CBS 2 News at noon. Now back to CBS News' coverage of the Belgian attacks. Um, even while information about the attacks in Belgium was still preliminary, to hold over the midnight to eight shift of the uh, strategic response group, the SRG, as well as the Counterterrorism Bureau, CRC, or the critical response uh, group, and um, to redeploy them to posts that reflected uh, increasing security in transit locations, transit hubs, and other high-profile locations for the rush hour.